Hi, I'm Loli, and I'm so glad you are here. Today, I will be sharing with you three beautiful spring DIYs that can also be used for Easter. These are easy to make and quite inexpensive using Dollar Tree products. If you enjoy these, don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and like. And here we go with the first inspiration. For this project, and I'm using one of these canvases that I got from Dollar Tree and a pizza pen. And I'm going to remove all the staples that come in the back of that canvas sign. I'm going to completely remove the canvas so I can use it for my project. I will be using both things, the frame and the canvas. First, I took this concord grape from Apple Barrel and I painted my frame with it. Then I took lilac mist from Apple Barrel and I'm going to use it to dry brush on the entire frame to give this a little bit more dimension and give it a more rustic look as well. And this is what I ended up with. I love that effect. Look how cute that is. So once that paint dry, I'm going to take my frame and we're going to add it to the canvas and I'm going to use some hot glue to attach it together. So now we're going to be doing a reverse canvas. Then I'm going to use my little healing mat from Dollar Tree and my X-Acto knife and I'm going to remove all that excess canvas from the outside of the frame. Just be very careful doing this step that you do not cut that NDF board that this frame is made of. Then I painted a pizza pan with chiffon cream from rust -Oleum. I ended up giving it a total of three coats. Then I'm going to add this frame to the pizza pan and I allow the edges to make marks onto the paint so I knew exactly where to add my glue. So I just added my glue onto those places that the frame will be touching the pizza pan and I repositioned it in place and held it there until it was completely set. Now I'm taking some of this rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to measure how much I'll need to go around the entire pizza pan. I'm going to burn off the fuzzies so I don't have to do it later. Then I'm going to start gluing this onto the pan starting at the very top making sure that my ends are very flat once I cut that rope. And I'm going to add hot glue all along and add this rope to the entire border of the pizza pan. Now that I got to the top, I'm just going to remove this tape from the edge of the rope. And now we're going to cut that little excess that we have. So we have a nice flush finish here. Just make sure to add a little bit of hot glue on the inside of that rope, hold it together in place, and then add hot glue in the entire piece, including that other piece that was opposite and glue it in place. Now I'm taking some of this ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. This is part of the B collection of that they have. And I'm going to create a two loop bow using this. So if you see right here, I'm just looping the ribbon and meandering in different directions making sure there that my tails are the length that i want them and then i'm just going to crisscross into one end then i'm going to cross it under that loop that i just made and i'm going to bring it over to create another loop and i'm going to do the same thing going on the opposite way and this is going to allow me to have two loops in each side and the tails will remain opposite to each other once I'm happy with the length of my tail, I'm going to cut that excess ribbon off. And I'm just going to gather the middle, just squishing it and walking my fingers through until they have a nice cinch edge and that my loops look nice and neat as well. Then I did the same thing with another ribbon, but I'm just going to, you know, do the meandering only once to create one loop and two tails, one loops at the top and the tails. Then I'm going to add both of these ribbons, both of these bows together. And just going to tie them in place using some jute cord. Now I'm just going to cut that excess piece of ribbon off that tail, making sure that both tails are nice and even. And I'm going to use that piece that I cut off to create a little piece to cover that middle jute. So I just rolled it onto each other, making sure that the edges of the ribbon are inside right to the center. And since this is wire ribbon, it was quite easy. 
And then I'm just going to wrap that around that um, bow and stick it using some hot glue. Yarn remeasuring to make sure that that's the perfect size, and it is. So I'm going to put that bow to the side, and I'm going to take some of these florals that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just removing the little pieces, as you see there, of the stems, and I'm going to glue them to the top of my wood round or my pizza pan round, in this case. And I'm gluing uh, one, actually two pieces on each side using some hot glue. Now it's time to attach the bow to the top, so I'm just going to do that using a generous amount of hot glue. The center of the bow looked kind of bare, so I decided to add this flower to the center. I cut off the little piece that the stain goes in, and then I added some hot glue to that bottom piece and glued it to the flower so it wouldn't fall apart. I decided to use this flower because I thought it looked just like the one in the pictures. I have some of this leftover fern that I use for different projects and I'm going to add it in between the florals just to break up all the purple and make this look fuller. I added three leaves of fern to both sides. My friends, if you enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're so inclined, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you each time that I upload a new video. All these things are free and they mean the world to me. So apparently I couldn't wait to put the hanger on. So I took this beaded garland from Dollar Tree and I painted a section using this mystic um, Mystic Like Leg, yes, from Apple Barrel. And I'm going to paint my beads using that and a chip brush. Then I cut off the section that I needed. A, I put a knot on each side of the jute cords. And then I'm going to use that to add to my pizza pan. I just added my jute cord, as you see right there, added some more hot glue on there and hot glue. And this don't like each other, hot glue and metal. So I took some masking tape and added it at the top of my hot glue as my hot glue was still hot. And this creates a lot stronger bond between the two materials. And now we are back to the fern. So I'm going to add two more pieces of fern on each side on here i just kept showing this to my husband and i'm like he was like um what's up with all the purple so i said you know what we got to break it up a little bit more so i added some more of that fern just to you know take away a little bit from all that purple And I did the same exact thing with the other side. This is looking so cute, but I needed more. So I'm going to add another shade of purple by using these flowers that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to add one little speck in between the ferns there just to break that up a little bit more and give this even more texture. I love how this piece turned out. Leave me a comment and let me know how you like it. My friends, so this video is part of a collaboration. It's a Spring Fever collaboration that is hosted by Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun and Katie from Lady Ray Crafting. And the guest host this month is Amber from DIY with Amber. The links to their channels and to their playlist will be linked in the description box below and also pin in the comments. Make sure that you head on over to their channels and to their playlist and show everyone some love. All right, let's head on over to the next inspiration.
For this one, I'm using one of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree. And the first thing that I'm going to do is remove that hanger off of it and remove that tag as well. And I'm painting it with two coats of my Rack and Decker paint and primer mixed with some plaster at Paris. I took one of these chunky pieces from Dollar Tree and I painted it using the same paint. This is brand new this year from Dollar Tree. And this is how they're looking so far. So here guys, I was supposed to be decoupaging my bunny first but for some reason I decided that I needed to glue these two pieces together so I glued them with a combination of hot glue and wood glue but you know that's not going to be taken apart so I can do my decoupaging first but I just wanted to let you know that yes we get very excited our, our crafters out here too and make mistakes so you know be graceful with yourself all right so I took it apart and here I'm going to add some mud budge to the front of my bunny I'm going to make sure that I do a, it's a thin coat, but not like that's going to dry too quickly because I am going to be adding that tissue paper that I got from Dollar Tree onto the front of my bunny, but I don't want it to be soaking wet so it will wrinkle a lot. I want it to be tacky so I'm able to smooth it on and everything molds nicely to the surface. I start tacking it down from the bottom and I keep working my way up, making sure that everything is nice and smooth as I'm going along. And I'm also paying close attention to all the edges to make sure that that is also adhered very nicely. Then I'm coming back in using a bowl of saran wrap, just rubbing it around and removing any wrinkles that did form while I was putting it in. Then I'm just removing some of that excess tissue paper, just using my scissors. And then I'm going to come in and add a layer of mud sponge on the top of my bunny to make sure that it's nicely protective and adhere as well. And once that dries, I'm going to take my nail file and file away all the paper that is left on the edges. And this is how my bunny is looking so far. Now we are going to go ahead and adhere it back onto that round. I'm going to use the same combination of wood glue and hot glue. And I made sure to wipe off any excess glue that oozed from the sides. And look how cute this is turning out. Then I'm going to use some of this greenery that I got from Dollar Tree. So the first thing that I did was go ahead and remove some of the pieces off of it. And I'm going to glue it on different sections in the front of the bunny. So I'm just trying to space them out. Some pieces I glued whole and some pieces I cut in half and turned into two separate little bushes. To give some variety and texture to this piece. So I'm just going to glue the base of each one of the pieces down onto the front of the wood round. Here you'll see in a second how I cut one of the pieces in half. So here I'm just waiting for that hot glue to dry. And in the meantime, I'm cutting this piece onto two separate little plants. So um, I'm just using the hot glue that's already oozing from the one that I have on there. I'm putting a piece towards the side of it. And then I'm going to continue doing this until the entire front of the bunny is has some of this. But I'm leaving spaces in between because this is not the only greenery that I'll be using. And here you can see when I have a few of them put on. Wait, see how cute that looks already? I'm just leaving some room in there. The secret here is to have the patience to wait for the hot glue to set. Now I'm going to use this pick that I got from Dollar Tree. It looks like little tiny flowers. And um, I'm going to glue them in between each one of these greenery right here. And I'm sorry that you're not able to see the front fully, but you're able to see what I'm doing onto that um, wood round. And I just added it in places in which I felt like I needed to add something else to fill it in. And I kept alternating between the two greeneries, filling in with the pink and these flowers against that paper. Look how cute that's looking, guys. I am loving these. I got them. I don't even know when I got them. I know I got them at Dollar Tree, but no idea when. So, you know, I'm just filling it in until it looks happy. 
and happy. <laughs> How are you liking this so far? I like it, but I need some more depth. So I took some of this brown oxide from Apple Barrel with a small paintbrush, and I'm just going to go ahead and distress or outline the entire silhouette of the bunny and also of the wood round, just to give this more depth and a little bit more that distress, you know, farmhouse look that I love. And don't forget to let me know what you think. The next inspiration today is also another Dollar Tree product. This is also a new product. And look how beautiful those little cutouts are. I'm going to paint it with my celery from Waverly. And this is what it's looking like so far. And then I'm going to take four beads out of this puzzle that I got from the toy section at Dollar Tree. I'm going to choose four of the dark brown ones. And I'm going to glue them to the bottom of my little crate using a combination of wood glue and hot glue. And here, they, each of them have two sections in which they have little holes. So I made sure to use one of the sections of that hole to glue this down so it wouldn't show. And then the other hole I put it to was the inside of the crate so it also will not be as noticeable. And I repeated this process with all four of the legs. And now that our crate is ready, I'm going to take one of these bunnies that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to stain it using my Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe. Then using some Black & Decker Paint & Primer, I painted the tail and the raised sections of the ears. Once it was dry, I'm going to take some wood glue and some hot glue and attach the crate onto the bunny. Then I'm adding some floral foam to the crate. Now it's time to cover the floral foam with some floral moss. And then give it a quick haircut. Now it's time to add some carrots to this. I'm going to use this carrot garland that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove both the stem in the top and the jute cord from in the bottom. And I'm going to replace the stem using some boxwood that I got from Walmart. I made a total of four carrots doing this. Now we're going to glue the carrots onto the four moss. As you see right there, I'm just going to make sure that once I hit the hot glue, I just hold it in place. I want this to be in a slanted way and I don't want it to fall over. So I'm holding the carrots until they're completely set onto the floral moss. Once I created these three right here, I'm going to come in with some greenery that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use the same one I used for the previous DIY and we're going to position it in different sections around the carrots.
Then I took some of this floral from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut it into small stems and add it to this planter as well in those places in which I have most of the floral moss still showing. wanted to add some more orange to the front so I'm going to glue and the last carrot to the very front right here making sure that it's in between all the other florals and it's just blending nicely look how cute that's looking but I'm not done yet <laughs> we're gonna finish it off with a cute little bow at the neck of the bunny and then now we are done don't forget to let me know what do you think about this one I love it. <laughs> Let me know what you think. All right, let's go see the final review. As I was filming this, I thought that this bunny needed a little bow, so here it is without the bow. And in the next take, you will see it with the bow. Let me know which one of it would you prefer with or without the bow. My friends, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be blessed, be a blessing, and craft responsibly. And if you would like to follow me on social media, here are my social media links. And don't forget to visit my friends in the playlist. And here are some suggestions that you are sure to enjoy. And you're more than welcome to binge away with this playlist as well. Thanks again so much for watching. You're amazing. Bye.